Hello and welcome to M2 University at mshau.com, your education and training resource for miners and mining contractors. Today we're going to talk about MSHA's five most common mining fatalities. Now before we do that, you'll also want to go to mshau.com forward slash prevent mine fatalities to review the article that we're basing this video on. There are lots of other resources and articles that are really helpful at mshau.com as well. All of the information that we'll review today is drawn from about 105 fatality reports from 2015 to 2019 to date. Now, MSHA classifies fatalities into about 28 different types. We're only going to review the definition, provide examples and best practices for the five most common that you see here. Starting with powered haulage at 43% of mining fatalities, MSHA provides this set of example equipment and a definition that states the accident must be caused by the motion of the haulage unit. This includes accidents that are caused by an energized or moving unit or failure of a component part. An example of a powered haulage fatality is this miner who was injured fatally when his light duty truck was run over by a haul truck. You can see in this case, this light duty truck was absolutely no match for the huge, heavy, and powerful haul truck. Another powered haulage fatality, a 45-year-old underground technician, four years of experience, was killed when he was operating his load haul dump and it ran over him. We see this time and again where an equipment operator leaves his vehicle for some reason and finds himself slipping, tripping, getting caught up underneath the vehicle, and the results are tragic. Best practices for avoiding powered haulage fatalities include pre operational checks, making sure that the equipment is functioning properly doing on-shift work area and dump site examinations, checking berms, traffic control measures, making sure signs are in place, always wearing seat belts, checking blind spots, making sure that visual contact is maintained, use horns, backup alarms, mirrors, and in some cases vehicles have backup cameras or side cameras, Follow all communication and confirmation protocols visually, hand signals, radios, and restrict vehicle and pedestrian access from heavy equipment areas. Number two, machinery, 17% of mining fatalities. MSHA offers the definition that includes examples of equipment, electric and air powered tools, drills, drag lines, derricks, cranes, they specify that these accidents must result from the action or motion of the machinery or from failure of these components. An example of a machinery fatality includes this 59 year old supervisor with 40 years of experience, fatally injured when his crane fell 85 feet into the quarry. Another machinery fatality. A 32-year-old continuous mining machine operator was pinned between the cutting head and the coal rib as he was backing the machine out. Needless to say, a situation nobody wants to find themselves in. Some best practices for avoiding machinery fatalities include making sure that everyone is trained on working on or around machinery. Ensuring that everybody knows where emergency stops are, how to use them, and stays within reach. Only working on machinery that is locked out and tagged out. Make sure that moving machine parts are blocked if you're going to be working on them. And if at all possible, work with a buddy. Number three, falling or sliding material. Makes up about 9% of mining fatalities. This one can be very tricky to classify, 
and MSHA says classify with caution. Assign the cause as the force that set the material in motion. Now, they use an example of other causes that would set the material in motion that you would charge the fatality to. In this case, if material is set in motion by machinery, haulage, equipment, etc., charge the force that set that material in motion. Here are some examples of falling or sliding material fatalities. A 26-year-old miner, less than a year of experience, fell from the top of a previously cut slab of granite. He was cutting the granite from the wall when the block suddenly shifted. He was not wearing fall protection. He lost his balance and fell between the rock and the high wall. Another example, a 52-year-old electrician with 13 years of mining experience working alone, a portion of the rib fell and struck him, and they found him between the coal rib and the continuous mining machine. Some best practices for avoiding falling or sliding material fatalities. Always perform ground inspection and control procedures. Ensure that pile management and slope stability is maintained. Be cautious of weather conditions and pay attention to those. And perform safe scaling operations to remove any loose material. Number four, fall of a face, rib, side, or high wall. This accounts for about 9% of fatalities as well. And the definition includes fall of materials while bearing down and placing props, also pressure bumps and bursts. This does not include accidents in which the motion of machinery or haulage equipment caused the fall. An example of this type of fatality, a 65-year-old equipment operator with 19 years of experience was operating a front-end loader, removing material from a bank. When it collapsed, he was ultimately engulfed and asphyxiated. You can barely see his machine here. Another example, at a coal mine, a 33-year-old miner was struck by a rock that fell from the bottom section of the high wall while he was changing cutter heads. You can see that rock here. Some best practices for avoiding these types of fatalities. Employ ground control inspection procedures all the time. Follow approved roof control plans. Ensure safe bolting operations are taking place on a specified interval. Add supports when fractures are detected. And make sure that examinations of roof, face, and rib are done. And scale loose rib and high wall material in pre shift operations. Number five, slip or fall of a person accounts for about 6% of fatalities, and MSHA provides this definition which includes slips or falls from an elevated position or at the same level while getting on or off machinery or haulage equipment that is not moving. This includes slips or falls while servicing or repairing equipment and also includes stepping into a hole. An example of this, a 46-year-old contractor, three years of experience, fell backward through a narrow gap between these two log washers. The victim was changing belt drives when his wrench slipped and he lost his balance. And you can see that narrow gap here. Another example, at a coal mine, a 43-year-old plant attendant with 13 years of experience climbed a ladder to repair a damaged plate. He fell about 19 feet onto a moving refuse belt, and he was found about 55 feet down the belt. You can see the ladder on the left and the opening here. Some best practices to avoid slip or fall fatalities. Make sure that everyone gets ladder and fall protection training, that you wear fall protection, not only wear, but actually use it. There are examples of fatality reports where miners were wearing fall protection, but they weren't tied in. 
so ensure proper anchor point attachments are used. Lockout and tagout equipment that you're working on. And in any case, best practices to avoid fatalities, ensure task training is up to date, make sure that everyone gets site specific hazard awareness training, everyone knows traffic patterns because they tend to change, train pedestrians about working around equipment, and follow all communication procedures with operators. Now, one of the questions that comes up is about the age and experience of these fatality victims. In 2019, there were 16 fatalities. The average age was 41 years old with 13 years of mining experience. So these are the five most common fatalities at U.S. surface mines and underground mines. Ideally, these would be 105 preventable fatalities at U.S. mines. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and we'll look forward to seeing you at mshu.com.